If you're signed to a major indie record label or even a major label for that, maybe you're not as big, a thought will eventually come to your mind and that is this, where is my money? The root cause of this thought comes from the fact that the artist doesn't understand the relationship between the DSPs, the distributor and the record label may it be an independent record label or a major record label. And because they don't understand this, this relationship that exists between the three, then what they wanna do is they wanna audit and sue the record label. Now, I can stand on the record label side and say I totally understand, and I can stand on the artist side and say I totally understand both positions. The artist is frustrated because they're not making any money from the record label. You see, artists shouldn't have to wait around for their advance checks due to the way money flows in this music industry. And this is a technological problem that spawns videos constantly like this one, Billion Dollar Betrayal and the Dark Side of the Record Labels or music industry, right? You get it? Like, there's a technological issue that needs to be solved and you will see how the dark side works. And you're gonna be like, yo, I thought there was more to it. Nah, it's just, you gotta live through the time and you'll begin to see why this is a huge problem. And we're gonna talk about it coming up right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham. Let's hop right into this. All right, Music Money Makers, so here is your dark side. The income time period is 90 days. It takes 90 days after release for a distributor to start issuing the label royalties. Payment also depends on whether you released at the beginning, middle, or end of the period or the quarter, and the minimum threshold for payment from the distributor. This is part one of how artists get frustrated with their money and they're like, yo, you owe me some money, man. It's because of this right here. This starts it. The next part is gonna determine what the label will need to do when they get this money so that they can A, if it's a small label, keep it afloat, or B, if it's a big label, keep the entire, well, still keep it afloat, all right? So because you gotta, gotta keep the staff paid. Now, revenue allocation, debt to income ratio. Now I'm starting with the 30% profit. This is a typical 80-20 deal. And what I did was I put in a payroll percentage here, a 21% tax percentage here, and some operational expenses here. And then of course I have your project debt. Now all of the expenses on top before project debt right here, is the 70% or 80%, excuse me. So a typical 80-20 deal looks like this. 20% of the cash flow is going to the artist's debt. However, it's only 20%. So this is part two of why the artist will be getting frustrated. This is going deeper into the dark side. It's simply because they now have to rely on show money to keep up with the pace of their career. Remember, you got an advance and I'm gonna cover that in a minute. Now, an artist who didn't do a 360 with their labels will be a little less worried because they have control over their merchandise and brand deals. So you've heard it on this channel and I'm quite sure you've heard it on plenty of other channels that the artist has to pay for all of the debt using their percentage, which is the 20% project debt. Now, there are a lot of people eating out of this 20%, whether it be executive producers, vocal producers, music producers or whatnot, they can pull from this 20% right here. You get what I'm saying? And if producers are getting a bigger royalty than a, a full rate for, then they will be eating from the 20% as well. So this 20% gets diced up a lot of different ways, more than the artist actually knows. So that even takes you further down the rabbit hole. But our debt or our, our, our profit to debt income uh, ratio here uh, will be the 80% on top. So the label has to keep the, the folks funded and they have to have some percentages here for operation expenses. Now they gave you a marketing budget, I'm quite sure of it. So, you know, this will contribute back to fresh marketing initiatives that doesn't have anything to do with your debt. And then of course tax and then payroll for the staff. And then of course they're gonna take their profit right off of the top. All right, so the, the, the label is already at a 30% rate, they're already profiting before you even pay back the, the total debt that is on your project. Now, advances. I'm just, this is just a, just a quick little advance. Marketing and promotion expenses, let's just say 15K. Artist advance will be 75% of the 20%, which is 10K, and 25% of the uh of the 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 20%, which is the artist royalty that we did back here, will be a thousand bucks to the producer. Now, if we consider our 90-day payment periods, every three months a payment will be made on the debt. Marketing and promotions debt will be taken care of first before all advances, unless stated otherwise in producer agreements. 
So you can clearly see why the artist is frustrated because unless the initial records were big enough, there is no chance that they will ever recoup. This is the typical dark side. Everybody knows about this dark side and if you don't, then here it is. And there's, there's I mean, this is nothing new, right? This is nothing shocking. It's just that the 90 day payment periods begin to delay the length that it's gonna take to recoup. So what happens? Momentum goes down. If there's a decline in momentum before the expenses are paid back, chances are the artists will never recoup. We hear this, but now you know why they're not recouping. If there is an increase in momentum before the original expenses are paid back, then the label will put more money behind a song to increase its exposure, adding to the debt until they reach the cap on the budget. Now this causes the recoupment schedule to be kicked down the road even more, ultimately resulting in an unrecouped budget for the initial life of the artist's career span, which is on average 10 years if you can make it, okay? So at this point, of course, we're never gonna recoup. So when people come in to the game and they max out their advances, because this happens, uh, usually you'll have a manager that comes in and they know the artist will need money because the first thing they're relying on is the record label advance. They will turn around and go straight to the PRO and say, we just did a deal. We want to advance out a couple, you know, thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars on our performance royalties. So we'll max out every single possible advance we can get, pocket the money today and the hopes of maybe you'll flip it. But in the beginning, you've never, neither you or the manager in some cases, have never really dealt with that much money. So you don't really know what to do with it because taxes hit that money because it is a one-time uh, income check. And then you also have, you know, the manager having to get a piece of that. And then your attorney having to get a piece of that. So forth and so on and so on. And as you can see, you won't be left with much. So if the momentum decreases while we're still trying to recoup and everything is coming in on 90 day cycles, eventually you will see that you will never recoup. Now, quick recoup budget structures never work for major labels. This is when you say, well, 100 percent revenue comes in all in expense minus all in expenses equals profit. This is great when you're independent. This model is only meant for mom and pop labels only. This may be the formula that you are all using to run your labels now. However, as a bigger label, you have staff to pay and recouping quickly is not an option if you are to keep your operation afloat. Now, this is the thing that artists don't understand. However, what happens in the sense when the record labels start to take the profit off the top, they take payroll, the tax and the op expenses, they begin to take money that they could allocate to, let's say, a future, your second album of yours, right? And they may say, well, look, we're going to have to like kind of slow down what we're going to advance you on the next project. We're going to have to piece it out to you because we took some of the money that we took off the top as profit and we already paid it out to other deals that actually required more because they started doing better than your particular situation, which this happens. You get what I'm saying? I'm not going to say who I've heard that one from, but, you know, I'm going to keep certain names off of the off of the the, uh, the show here, but these are A-list artists that have been that have griped to me before about the record label took this money from me and they put it over here on this artist because they were bigger and I got stiff with a lower check and I had to wait for my advances. You get what I'm saying? So this is a mom and pop situation. This won't work when you get bigger because you're gonna need more money, right? So hence, this is where you would get a cash money situation where Wayne wants to sue and get money from the label but they don't have it because what happened? Our distributor takes 90 days to drop this cash in. And even though on paper you're owed that, you're looking at years down the line before you can actually get paid. And when you need money to actually do something because you're owed it, yet the label just doesn't have it. Now this is the real dark side when the label has to come up short and has to close down sometimes, okay? Now, when do I start getting royalties? Now, in two years, maybe if everything goes to plan and your songs did well enough to keep steady revenue coming in, and this is a strong, hard maybe, maybe, maybe in two years, may, and that's a really good year for you. Like everything worked out the box, out the gate. When can I get the next advance? If the label decides it is worth pursuing another contract with you or your time period for the first single is up, that's when you can get another one. Now with terms, 
This causes your debt to rise when the first single debt is unpaid and the label says we need another one. When you owe debt to a debtor, it can get really nasty depending on who's in charge of the debt. And it's not gonna be fun when you owe certain people who have a, uh, I don't know, a Napoleon complex. I don't know if that would be the word, but when you owe certain people who really want their money back, it can get really nasty. Now, I could just do shows to make up the difference, right? Well, if the song is declined already and nobody cares about seeing you, then the shows will barely keep you above water, causing you to go broke because traveling from here to there doing shows is highly, highly expensive. You get what I'm saying? And because it is, many artists just come off of the road and say, hey, we need to go back in the studio and do another album because I can't afford to move around. It's too costly. And the record label owes me money that they don't have yet because the distributor is taking 90 days at a time before they get the checks. You understand what I'm saying? And then on top of that, there's the debt that has to be paid back before I get paid back. So now there's a huge problem here, which is why artists say that the record labels are evil and yada, yada, yada. The dark side is the 90 day period. That's where it starts there. I don't really think there's anything wrong with the debt and income allocation. Yes. The record label owns the masters. They pay for them. They pay to market them and promote them and all of that. I don't see that, that there's anything wrong there. Our issue is instant payment. And if instant payments could happen today, then I think that there will be a lot more record labels that will last longer. And I feel that artists will be a lot more satisfied in this game. Let's keep going. Now, here's what I suggest. Stay independent as long as you can. Don't rush the process and consistently build yourself up. Eventually, you will adopt an allocation structure like the one in the first slide or the second slide, rather, and you won't have to depend on the major label to be your saving grace, which is not a position you want to be in. So this is what you want to utilize. You need a foundation like the 60 day record label course. This is a framework established to help you get your record label personally started in a 60 day sequence. Perfect without missing any pieces, collecting international and domestic record and publishing royalties, skipping the middleman, setting up the LLC and entire business structure flawlessly, and then learning how the game works through contracts so you don't get stiffed and you actually know how to move through this industry. All of this is included in this course and everything that you see right down beneath number three is what's included plus much more. You can click the link down below to get started. Because if you want to stay independent, you're going to need to know how to actually run a company. This is a business, right? So if this is your first time watching the channel, book a call with me. Or if this is not, still book a call. You got questions, I got answers. And then again, if this is your first time watching the channel, download the free stuff below so you understand a lot more about what's in the 60 day record label course and what you can really do to build a robust label. Grab this free stuff right here and you can watch a video that comes with it as well. All right, but you wanna pace your growth independently. And this is what it's gonna look like. You'll stay independent, increase your cash flow, control your fan base for more revenue, and you'll never rely on an advance if you don't need it because you might need it sometimes maybe from ASCAP or BMI. And then you'll seek investment from private investors or banks just to get a leg up, but it's gonna be easier to pay that back and you'll ultimately sleep better at night because of it, okay? Now, rushing to get the advance, because I know this is a lot of you all who say, I don't have the team, I just don't have the patience to sit here and work this thing independently, and I'm looking for some help or somebody to come save me, you'll fall into the trap of the shiny advance. And you may only last two to three years max in this climate unless your management is skillful and crafty. And if you're just coming in, you probably don't have skillful and crafty management. And you'll have more stress along with the stress of upward growth. Getting the money on day one and paying everybody, you'll be like, cool, all right, cool. But at least I ain't broke no more. But then after that, here comes the growth that you never expected. It's like, like you're becoming the Hulk overnight. And you have to imagine the Hulk going through. I, the reason why he, he grunts is because it's got to be pain growing that big that fast. You get what I'm saying? So you don't want to be in that position. You want to be right here. Music Money Makers, if you haven't received any royalties from your major independent label or your, your record label for that matter, understand it's the way that the money is flowing. It's not that anybody's trying to cheat you out of anything. It's the way they have their deal structured so that they can have enough money 
to continue to operate. There's a lot of factors included in your unearned cash flow. So music money makers, if you make music, you should always make money. So therefore, you should jump into the 60-day record label if you want to keep some more of that money in your pocket. Download the free stuff right beneath this video right here. Book a call right beneath this video. And I will see you next time. Peace.